Pay attention, motherfuckers. Get your notebooks out, pins and pads. It's not a video that you just fucking watch for entertainment. This is when you sit down and study. You watch more than once because I'm about to show you exactly why most people never really reach their potentials and never really succeed the way they hope to in life. If you do this right, you'll be able to accomplish all your goals and have what will look like to others an unbelievable run of continuous victory. If you fuck this up, you can expect ups and downs, roller coasters, and a really chaotic life indefinitely. So you wanna make sure you pay attention. Over the last two decades, I've coached literally thousands of people in both fitness, business, and in life. And I've noticed certain trends. There's two types of people. Person one, this is, when they're winning in life. This is when they're losing. And winning and losing can mean a lot of things. It could mean they're in great shape or they're fat and out of shape. It can mean they're making a lot of money or they're broke and struggling. It depends on what the goal is. But when they first start working with me or working with anyone, they put in a tremendous amount of effort initially. And then because of that, they start winning. But as soon as they start winning, effort fucking drops almost to nothing and then what happens with the amount of success they have it starts to dwindle right and then they won't start putting in effort again until they hit the bottom what does that look like somebody hits this point and then they start indulging in the fruits of their labors they start partying they start taking it easy and maybe they stop working on their business or they stop doing the things that got them the success in general for example i met a guy last week when I was in Las Vegas, he stopped me in the casino and he said, oh my God, it's Brandon Carter, King Keto, Gymnasium Jesus. Uh, I can't believe I'm meeting you. I was like, yeah, oh man, nice to meet you, brother. I'm, I'm sure this is very exciting for you. He said, yeah, man, like years ago, I was following your workout plans and your diet and everything. And I got into amazing shape, man. But then I stopped. He was kind of out of shape. He had like a real dad bod, real pre-diabetic physique. And I was like, why'd you stop? He's like, I don't know, man. I just got success and then I just got lazy. And I see this all the time. People stop doing the stuff that got them successful once they get a certain level of success. They take their foot right off the gas. I had a conversation with another dude yesterday. He was talking to me and he was saying, man, how's your podcast going? I was like, oh, it's going, yeah, it was going well, man. We're making like more progress every every month, you know, and blah, blah, blah. I'm talking about the podcast. He said, man, I had a podcast during the podcast pandemic. It was the top 25 in the business podcast. And I was like, well, why'd you stop? He's like, man, you know, I just got to travel and all that. What happens is they start indulging in the fruits of their labor or they get cocky. They think that it's just going to last or they just start partying too much or they think they don't have to work until the bills come or they get so fucking fat their kids friends are making fun of them or doctor says they about to die or some shit and then they get back to putting in that effort you might have had success in something and you stop then they start putting in the effort again and then after a while boom they start getting success some success and then boom they continue the same boom and bust cycle but it doesn't have to be that way the real g's they do this they put in the effort boom then when they start getting some success they don't take their foot off the gas they just maintain effort you start putting in max effort and then you maintain this is what you really want to do and then what happens is you still have setbacks life's not going to be a straight line what happens the lows become lower and see when you maintain success at this level at max level it starts to compound and if you watch me over the last 10 years i went from wearing an apple watch in a one bedroom apartment in queens to getting the brand new richard millet in a penthouse in miami goddamn private elevators oceanfront views sexy ass girlfriend half my age you motherfuckers still fucking bitches your age fuck i'm gonna do with a 40 year old bitch get her an iced out walker you don't want to be my age fucking 40 year old bitches man that's why you got to pay attention to this video i digress but a lot of you guys have been through you do this boom and bust shit what you want to do is maintain momentum there's three things you need to do to maintain momentum one is you got to maintain max effort especially when things get good this right here is the danger zone because that's when you can really start getting either full of yourself you can start getting cocky thinking your shit don't stink or you can't miss that's when it's most dangerous and worst of all if you get some success success is more dangerous than failure because if, when you get some success now you have leverage and with that leverage you can fuck your life up even more someone with no money 
they can't really fuck things up too much. But if you have money, now you can put a down payment on a house you can't afford. Now you got monthly payments that you can't afford. Next thing you know, you foreclosed. You fucked up your credit. You owe the bank a bunch of money. You can really fuck shit up on a deeper level with leverage. Success is more dangerous. What you want to do is work like you're losing even when you're winning. The reason this graph keeps going up like my life is because I maintained momentum. You want to think about a rocket ship going out of the atmosphere. It has those big fuel tanks on the side. Why does it have those big fuel tanks? Because it takes a lot of effort to get that rocket out of the atmosphere. But you motherfuckers keep quitting before you get out the atmosphere. You have to keep starting over and that's the hardest part. And you have to do the hardest part over and over again. And that's why most of you motherfuckers just get frustrated and quit and give up like a hoe. Number two, you got to understand that you have to keep your guard up. The more you sweat during peace, the less you bleed during war. What do I mean by that? Your life is not going to be an unbroken boulevard of green lights once you have some success. There's four different kinds of obstacles that can knock you off your path. One is just hits. You basically you're taking hits in life. There's always going to be things that can knock you off your path. You're always going to be taking hits. So you want to always keep your guard up and train for and prepare for it. And the problem is some people, they take their foot off the gas, they put their guard down, and then the hit turns into an L. They take a loss, but a hit doesn't have to be a loss. It could just be a small thing if you were prepared for it, if you were strong enough, but it ends up being a loss. And then if you're not prepared for that loss, then that loss can be a setback. A setback is the L that you're not prepared for. Then it's a loss. But see, the L doesn't have to be a loss. It could be a lesson if you was prepared for it so you can take hits if you're not prepared for it a hit turns into an l turns into a setback now if you're not prepared for that then it turns into a goddamn tragedy a hit doesn't have to be an l a l doesn't have to be a setback and a setback doesn't have to be a tragedy but you got to be preparing for the hits for example last year my cousin he got in a car accident and he died he lost his life man we were really close and it fucked me up emotionally but also funeral in three, four days or whatever, 20 grand. Who's going to pay for it? Well, I paid for it. Well, what if you had to give up 20 grand today because a family member died? How would you handle that? That might be a fucking tragedy for you and your family. I started paying for his daughter's school, helping out the family. That would have fucked a lot of y'all up. Could you even do it? That shit might have been a tragedy for you if you had to pay 20 K for a funeral and then you had to basically help support someone else's family, your cousin's family. That could have been a tragedy. For you or it could have been a tragedy for them man I, got, hey, I can't help it i ain't got it man i ain't got it man times is hot times is hot brother man y'all let me know how it works out <laughs> you know what i'm saying like a bitch not me i just handled it but i was prepared for it because i'm always preparing for the hits when they come this is the key to success always prepare for the next hit and get stronger in between hits when times are good that's when you want to be working the hardest because that's how you'll prepare yourself whether it's at acquiring skills building up your financial reserves, building your foundation. So when the next hit comes, it kind of just bounce off you. It's nothing. Otherwise, that shit can be a fucking setback. It could be an L or it could be a fucking tragedy, depending on how prepared you are for that. Because it's going to happen. Your life is not going to be an uh, unbroken boulevard of green lights. Bad things are going to happen over and over again until you die. But how severe it is and how it affects you depends on how you behave where everything is going good. Do you relax? Do you take your foot off the gas? Do you party? Run around getting high, drunk, fucking hoes? Or are you preparing for that shit? Getting ready? I think about the art. The next one's gonna come. I'm gonna be so strong by then that it will be nothing to me. When C9 came through, shut the whole world down. My son's mom got laid off. I said, don't even worry about it. Just chill. I'll take care of everything. You know what I'm saying? I told all my employees, we're not laying nobody off. My videographers, I didn't need them. When everything was shut down, I was like, I don't need you motherfuckers for anything right now because we're not filming nothing, but I'm still going to pay you. My son's nanny, she was staying home. I was like, just take care of your family. You don't even worry about it. I'm still going to pay you because I knew I was going to need her. I didn't want to go get another job. She was my son's best friend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And she was a great nanny. I was going to still need my employees when this shit was over. I didn't want to go get other jobs and shit. So I was like, nah, we're still gonna pay you for nothing. Just hold tight. And I didn't lay off anyone because I had enough reserves because I was waiting for some shit to happen. And even better than that, I had a bunch of fucking money on the side. I invested in the stock market 
with my man Romulus, and I made a fucking ton of money. The setback was the set up for the come up, because I was going hard the whole time. The more you sweat during peace, the less you bleed during war. So once you start getting some success in any arena, that is not the time to take your foot off the gas. That's the time to go harder and to prepare, because it's not going to be like that the whole time. Look at any stock chart of any company. You can see the chart doesn't go straight up. The key is to just understand that it's not going to be good forever. You want to work super hard during those good times. So when you get hit with something that could be a set, a setback, you're strong enough to withstand it. It's nothing. And this way you keep momentum. But I was talking about the way most people, they have this boom and bust cycle of success. But what we need, we want consistent success. So this blue line represented effort and the green line represented results. What you want to do is maintain max effort. But the third thing you need to do is not care so much about the results because if you do the work for the results you'll quit doing work once you get the results and that's how people end up in that boom bust cycle as soon as they get the results they take their foot off the gas they start chilling they stop getting the results then they turn it back up and it's just it's retarded what you want to do is focus on building the character building the character is more important than accomplishing the goals i remember when i first started working out and i'll say to somebody oh man i don't know if i'm have time to work out today and they'll be like oh you can just work out tomorrow i'm like no that's not how it works dumb man so they'll say something like oh one day won't hurt one day won't be a big deal one day is not a big deal as it pertains to the accomplishment of the goal but one day does hurt as it pertains to building the type of character of the man who does what he says he's going to do building the type of character that i want to have which is the man that pushes himself to his limits every day see most people are trying to see what they can get away with how little they can do i'm trying to see how much i can push myself because i know that if i build that character and if i maintain that character then the results will take care of themselves i literally don't even have to look at the results it's a big reason why i don't do a lot of celebrating of my accomplishments is because the victory didn't happen that day. The victory didn't happen when it was a million dollars in my bank account. The victory didn't happen when I had a million subscribers. The victory didn't happen when I had a million Instagram followers. The victory is every day. The victory comes from doing the things that lead up to that on a daily basis, consistently going all out every day. Because if you do the things that will accomplish the goal, success is inevitable. Say you wanna lose 10 pounds. It's easy, all you gotta do is make a list of everything you had to do to accomplish the goals. It's super simple. Let's say you want to do it in 10 weeks. That's a pound a week. A pound of fat is 3,500 calories. So if you're in a 500 calorie deficit, every day you'll lose a pound a week. It's simple math. So what do you have to do to lose this pound? First, you have to track your calories. You have to track your calories, boom. You have to track the calories you burn and the calories you consume. I keep a scale in my bag, food scale in my bag, I keep it wherever I go, and I put it in my fitness pal. I know exactly how many calories I ate each day. Boom, I track the calories I burn with my aura ring. I used to do it with the Apple Watch, but you know what I'm saying? The Richard Millet is a little flyer. The new Richard Millet, it don't track calories, but it shits on the fucking haters and snuts on the hoes. And that's a little bit more important to me. So I let the aura ring handle the heavy lifting of tracking my calories, tracking my calories consumed, tracking my calories burn. I have to be minus 500 calories every day. If I do those three things every day, I can't lose. It's super simple. Get some device, a Fitbit will do it too. If you want to be cheap, get you a Fitbit. That shit is under $100. No excuse to be fat. And just track your calories. Track how many you burn, how many consume, make sure you're in a 500 calorie deficit. 10 weeks, I'll be 10 pounds lighter. It's simple math, but I won't have to have a big celebration because I know if I do those three things every day, it can't not happen. And you do that with all your goals. You list out everything you have to do to accomplish those goals and make sure you do those every day. And just make today a victorious day. And if every day is a victorious day, then every week's a victorious week. If every week's a victorious week, then every month's a victorious month. If every month in Victoria's month, every year is a year of victory. And if every year is a victorious year, then you King Keto, Brandon Carter, Gymnasium Jesus. It's just math. So you want to focus on making today a victory and do that every day, especially when you're winning. Because people will tell me shit like, oh, man, I was doing good, man. But then, oh, I had a baby or fucking life gets in the way. And all I hear is, oh, you's a bitch. You say all these things and maybe they're good reasons to you, but all I hear is, oh man, normal, regular life shit happened and I wasn't strong enough to keep going under those circumstances. I'm a bitch, Brandon. 
I can only work hard under perfect circumstances. That's whole shit. You gotta be able to perform under any circumstances. Nima's been here for a year. He's seen all types of crazy shit happen. You know what I'm saying? Family members die, employees <laughs> acting out of character, <laughs> fucking the hurricanes. He lost the championship. I had to keep working under those circumstances. Watching my Miami Heat lose again. You know that was easy for me? But I kept working. You know what I'm saying? Like all types of shit is gonna happen. You gotta still be a G and perform under those circumstances. I don't wanna hear no excuses. Motherfucker, I had family members die and I stayed on the grind. You know what I'm saying? You gotta do that. You can't let shit knock you off, man, because your future depends on it. And the future of the people you care about depend on your success as a man. If you can maintain these things and you maintain your discipline under any circumstances, especially when you're successful, you maintain those disciplines, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you.